Good morning everyone and welcome to worship on the fifth Sunday after Easter. We begin with the collect for purity. Almighty God, to whom, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing together the splendour of the King. said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kanke, which means the Queen of the Ethiopians. 
The man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and was on his way home, sitting in his chariot, reading the book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading the prophet Isaiah. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they travelled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptised? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptised him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and travelled about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing together, trust and obey.
confession, let's just pause for a moment to recall to mind anything in particular that's on our mind that we would like to confess. And say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A collect special prayer for the fifth Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, has overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that, as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so that by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. John 15, verses 1 to 8. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St John. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruits by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our set Gospel passage this morning brings us to the last of the seven I Am sayings in St John's Gospel. Last week we heard about Jesus, where he said, I am the Good Shepherd. We have other statements. I've always liked that one when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life in John 14. Now we're on John 15 and Jesus says that he is the vine. I am the vine. Jesus and his disciples are at this moment the way, making their way to Gethsemane, the Garden of Gethsemane. And in a very short time, Jesus will be arrested and taken before the high priest and the Sanhedrin. Rewinding in my own life back to the 90s, I went out to Israel and I walked the route which I imagined that Jesus and disciples took to the Garden of Gethsemane. And as I walked around, I noticed that there were a number of fine vineyards. And I imagined that Jesus, seeing a vineyard, may have taken the opportunity to use it as a teaching point with the disciples. I just imagined Jesus stopping beside a well-kept vine, full of promise of the coming harvest, as he spoke these words which we had for our Gospel reading. Mind you, a vine grown, that grown all over Palestine is a plant actually that needs a great deal of attention if you want to cultivate the best fruit from it. You normally see it on terraces and it needs to be off the ground to be perfectly clean. 
Those of you who know your Old Testament sections of the Bible pretty well may recall that Israel is often the people of God might be see it referred to as the vine or the vineyard. It's worth looking at Ezekiel 15 verses 1 to 6 or Isaiah 5 1 to 17 or even Psalm 80. Of course, we're nearly 2,000 years removed from the words that Jesus spoke on that faithful day and yet they continue to be a powerful to us today as they were then. There is an eternal truth that we must look into as we embrace and consider the words of Jesus Christ. John 15 verse 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Do you know what it means to remain? Or as the older versions of the Bible put it, abide, abide in Jesus. It's to hold on to Jesus Christ. Spiritually, it means to stick by Jesus. Hang on to him. Stay with the Lord. Right from early on in Jesus' earthly ministry, he appointed the twelve. And as Mark 3, 14 says, that they might be with him and that he might send them out. Being with Jesus is most important. And if we want to be faithful witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Well, because he is the source of energy. He is the source of power. He is the anointing to live and share the gospel life. Here Jesus says that he is the vine and we are the branches, which means we need to cling to Jesus Christ, the way branches cling to the vine. Now, I want us to notice the detail and attention of the vineyard. Jesus says that the Father is the gardener. God is the gardener. We see the two actions in verse 2. Firstly, he cuts off. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. And secondly, he proves. The text states, while every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes so that it may be even more fruitful. So I want to look at these two actions in turn. First, Jesus revealed the delicate care given to the branches that were not bearing fruit. Keep in mind these branches are attached to the vine. They are responsible for bearing fruit and expected to do so. Jesus declared the Father cuts off those branches that do not bear fruit. This does not refer to the remove, removal of the entire branch, as some people may assume. The root of the word or the idea is lifting up or raising. Now this makes great sense when we pause to consider it. Often branches grow too long and get caught up in the dirt of the ground. The gardener comes along and lifts up those branches out of the dirt and filth, removing them from the hindrance. Why? In order to promote fruit production. Today, let us be thankful that the Lord lovingly lifts us up at times, raises us up. The gardener does not remove the entire branch, but he cuts off the areas of the branch that have become diseased and are no longer productive. By removing the diseased portion of the branch, it allows the branch to become healed, to become stronger, in order to become more productive again. The idea of cutting off seems painful, and we don't enjoy the process, but it's necessary at times. You see, the Lord must tenderly remove those areas from our lives that hinder our fruit production. Secondly, the pruning. It's a little bit like the cutting off. It needs careful attention from the gardener. But this time it actually involves branches that are producing fruit. The gardener carefully prunes off the branches in order to allow it to, be, to produce even more fruits. This includes the removal of particular portions of the branch in order to make it more productive. It also speaks of cleansing, literally purging the vine. Now this may include removal portions of blooms of a particular shoot growing out of the branch. They might eventually produce fruit, 
but the fruit may be small or less desirable. When the careful pruning of the vine, the gardener assures that there will be an ample harvest and the fruit will be full and desirable. Now this may be much more difficult for us to process as the branch or to endure it because it has the potential to produce a measure of fruit. But the gardener seeks an abundant fruit. The Lord at times prunes our lives, removing things that we may consider to be desirable or the things that may produce fruit. But the pruning may not, may not involve areas of life that are sinful or rebellious, but in fact hinder us from bearing much more fruit. Jesus says in verse 3, You are already clean because the word I have spoken to you. Jesus declared the disciples had been cleansed through the word he had spoken. These had heard Jesus' word and believed that he was the Christ. They had heard and attached to the vine. They were cleansed in him. Their hope was not an adherence to the law or specific traditions, but faith in Jesus Christ. This process has not changed and it will never will. In order to be cleansed from our sins, being attached to the vine and bearing fruit for Jesus, we must remain in Christ. He is the sole means of our salvation. St Paul declared that we are saved by grace through faith, not by works, lest any of us should boast. We are saved by grace alone. He also declared that faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. Hearing and receiving the gospel is essential to salvation and being attached to the vine. We must attach ourselves to the vine and remain attached to the life of the vine. First of all, remain in me so I also may remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. We must not miss the expectation Jesus revealed here. He admonished them to remain in the vine so that they would able, be able to produce fruit. This is the expectation for every believer. If we are in Christ, we are expected to bear fruit. If we are in Christ and we're not bearing fruit, we can expect the Lord to prune us to remove areas that have become dead in order to enhance production. Verse 5 I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. After we see Jesus declaring his position in relation to disciples, Jesus declared, all who remained in him brings forth much fruit. We must not forget the position he works out. He is the vine, we are the branches. We are the branches, he is the source, we are the servant. If we remain in Jesus, drawing from his wisdom, strength and grace, and through the Holy Spirit, we will be able to bring forth much fruit. He has promised fruit production for those who remain in him. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. It's kind of like the parable Jesus told about the two men who built a house. One man built his house on the rock. Matthew 7 verse 25 tells us, The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because its foundation was on the rock. The man who built his house on the rock didn't build it in vain. But then there was a second man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the stream rose, the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. The man who built his house in sand built it in vain. And Jesus said, everyone who hears his words of mine and does not put them into practice is like the foolish man who built his house on the sand. We need to build on the foundation of God's word. But it's not enough just to know the words, we have to live it out as well. Jesus declared we could do nothing apart from him. We cannot produce fruits. The branch has no ability to produce. It simply reveals what is produced by the vine. 
If there's any fruit, any fruit in our lives, it's be there because the Lord has produced it. We have nothing to boast in ourselves. The Lord Jesus provided the means of our salvation. It was given and received freely. If we live and bear fruit, it's fruit of eternal value. It's because the Lord has produced it through us. He alone is worthy of praise. If you want to have a fruitful life, you need to listen to Jesus and obey Jesus. Earlier in Jesus' ministry, we had those words from John 6, where Simon Peter said to Jesus, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Jesus has the words of eternal life. Not just words about the things we should do, do in our lives, but the words that actually give us life, eternal life. It's a powerful and convicting passage of scripture that we have. Are you remaining attached to the vine today? Have you been saved by grace, grafted into the vine? If so, is your life producing fruit? Maybe the Holy Spirit has been revealed in some areas of your life that need to be dealt with. Well, bring them before the Lord and now allow them to tenderly prune you and enable you to be productive again. But we need to be attached, to remain, to abide in the vine. He is our source, our life. May God richly bless us. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe, believe in God, God the Father, from, from whom every family, family in, in heaven, heaven and, and on earth, earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing, You Are the Vine.
Now Carol will bring us our prayers of intercession. Good morning. Dear Lord in heaven, I love and thank you for Broadfield, Christ the Lord. Thank you for Howard, Deirdre and Bethany. Love and bless them and keep them all safe and well. Thank you for Jonathan, Wendy and Peter, Lord. For all those people who help at church, Lord. How blessed we have been through the pandemic with online services, prayer meetings and quizzes. Thank you for everyone involved. I pray and thank you for Julia, our parish nurse. Thank you, Lord, for all she does for our church, Lord. I pray and thank you for church, Lord. I pray for our country, Lord, that things will start to get back to some sort of normality soon, Lord. I pray for everyone in church who is unwell, Lord, and suffers pain. I pray that they will all get the help they need. Thank you for our wonderful NHS who have worked really hard during this pandemic. How blessed we are to have this wonderful service, Lord. I pray for poor countries like India who are really struggling with this pandemic, Lord. Have mercy on them, them and help them to get the equipment and help they need. Thank you for the great vaccination program over here, Lord, in our country. How blessed we are. And Lord, I thank you that regarding what happened at Crawley College this week, thank you that nobody was seriously injured. Thank you for our wonderful police and all their presence. And I thank you for the two brave teachers who actually fought against the uh, attacker and I pray Lord for all the people that were involved thank you that no one was seriously hurt and I pray Lord that everyone will find peace regarding that thank you for the love of Jesus who is our saviour who really loves us Lord thank you Lord for all the good things you do for us all Amen. We sing Jesus Be the Centre.
The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To be glory and praise forever. From the beginning, you created all things, and all your words echo the silent music of praise. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You gave us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels, and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice and sing your praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the works of your hand, O Lord, as a mother tenderly gathers her children. You embrace the people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From then you raised up Jesus our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave me thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence. His sacrifice made once and all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising glory. And we rejoice to intercede for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son as we eat and drink these holy things in your presence. Form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at last with all your faithful saints to that vision of the eternal splendour which you have created us through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and in whom and with whom we all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you almighty in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his son. Lord, I am not worthy to see you, but only say the words, and I will be healed. Take this remembrance that Christ's body was broken for me and I truly pray. I drink this remembrance that Christ shed his blood for me and I'm truly grateful. A prayer. Eternal God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, grant us to walk in his way to rejoice in his truth and to share his risen life, who is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Oh. Amen. And the prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, 
We thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We now sing the days of Elijah. this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in, in the name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this service this morning. This week on Monday and Thursday at 7pm 
we have our usual Zoom prayer. Please join us for that. On Wednesday at 8 o'clock we're having a quiz, so feel free to join us for that. Anyway, we wish you a wonderful week and God's richest blessings.